Assalamu alaikum. This is Omar. And this is Omar as well. This is my cousin's son, Omar, who's five years old, who was killed in Gaza a week ago. So today, as, as my friend Khalil and my friends, um, Shamalakh family, we, we, we are wordless. We cannot speak now. We have uh, lost lots of family members. We stopped counting. So I will tell you now some names about my family. I will tell you a little bit about their stories. Then I will tell you about the people who are still in Gaza, my brothers. I will tell you about my grandmother who's in Gaza, still alive. So I'll, I'll tell you about this in a second. So I'll tell you about two family members, two entire families w were wiped up. So the first one is Fatima al mukhalalatis family. She was 75 years old. She was the first female judge in Gaza. She was practicing, practicing um, practical um, lawyer in Gaza. She worked tens of years. She was a judge. She was a retired ju judge. Her husband was uh, Fahmi al Najjar, was also a judge. He was 78 years old. And their sons, Muhammad Fahmi al Najjar, Firas al Najjar. So this lovely family was living and sleeping in their house. And in seconds, Israel has bombed their house using the American weapons, the British weapons, the European weapons. They have used these uh, Western weapons to kill my people. So now the taxpayers, the UK taxpayers, the UK universities, when they do labs and they check the weapons, check the arms, to make it effective, the next stage is to go to Gaza and test these weapons in the humans of Gaza, in my people, in Fatma Nim Khalalati, in the 75 years old Fatma Nim Khalalati, in her husband, Fahim al Najjar, in their son, Muhammad Fahim al Najjar, Firaz Fahim al Najjar, and on Omar, the little Omar, they tried the, the Western weapons and to see how effective this, these weapons, and then they sell it to the dictators all over the world. So this is about the first family which, which's been wiped up. The grandfather, the grandmother, the two sons, and their children, the son's children. The other family is Hiba Salim Ammar, who's my cousin, my mother's um, sister's daughter. She was killed with her husband with her three uh, kids who are under five years old, Huda, Kinda, and Jamil. They were killed with their in-laws, 25 people in that house. This is about the people, and we, we don't know who we are going to lose again. So I'll tell you a little bit about the ones who are still alive in Gaza. My grandmother, my mother's mother, is 90 years old. She's living in Gaza. She have moved South Gaza. Now, 30 family members are living in one sm small apartment, one toilet. I asked them, how do you sleep? They said, some of us, they sleep in the road, some of us, they sleep in the grass, some of us, they sleep in the corridors, some of the, us sleep on the beds. And they have one, one bathroom or toilet in the house. And they said, my grandmother, because she's old and she's scared, she needs to go to the toilet every five minutes. And there's lots of children in the house. I told them, what do you eat? What do you do? They said, when we go to the toilet, we flush the toilet once a day. Once a day, they flush the toilet because there is no water, no food, no electricity, no gas. I told them, how do you eat? How do they said, no one is allowed to have a shower. We don't eat meat. We don't eat fish. We don't have bread. I told them, how do you do the bread? They said, we try to make some fire outside the apartment, and we cook the bread or cook the food. And it's very risky. If you fire a small fire in, in Gaza, you will be bombed by the Israelis. And I will tell you about my brother. My brother, his name is Dr. Ahmed Mukallalati. He's the only plastic surgeon in Gaza. He was working here. He was living here with his daughters, with his son. They were living here in London. They were, my brother was working at St. Thomas's Hospital. He's the only and the first plastic surgeon. He traveled six months ago to Gaza to open the first plastic and reconstruction surgery department. He was con connecting with his um, fellow friends here at so St. Thomas Hospital. They were planning to have a plastic surgery department where they have online surgeries in Gaza. 
He was working with the universities in Gaza to educate the students. And he said, I have seen in Palestine, in Gaza, lots of doctors who will be the best doctors in the future. My brother was calling me yesterday because we lost the connection with him. He's in, in Gaza City in the biggest hospital, Al Shifa Hospital, which was bombed today. So my brother was telling me, we, do, we use the medical equipment without cleaning because there is no stuff. So the stuff either being killed or their family members have been killed or they went to southern Gaza to look after their family members. So he said, we used to have 12 doctors in the department, now we have four. He said, we don't now clean or do hygiene for the, for the medical equipment. So they do the operation without cleaning the medical equipment. And you can imagine. And the last thing he told me, we receive lots of uh, patients. So the capacity of the hospital is 800 beds. They have 3,000 patients in there. He said, when we receive people who need ICU rooms, we only have very little capacity. So he said we choose the ones with a high percentage to be alive and put them in the ICU. The rest we put them in normal beds without oxygen or the heart equipment. And most likely these people who are not admitted to the ICU will be died. So now we are saying the world is looking at our massacres. The doctors there are not having electricity in the hospitals no medical equipment, so the number of, of people killed is because of the Israeli bombs, because of the siege, because of the lack of equipment, medical supplies. We need to take action right now. It's not acceptable to see hundreds of thousands of people in the Western countries' streets. And we see the politicians all over the world are supporting Israel. Why no one has visited Gaza? Why? Are they human or not? So why no one have visited Gaza? Why we have seen the, 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 the Western politicians are visiting Israel's? No one's speaking about Gaza. And then the British foreign minister is saying, we call for the medical aid to come to Gaza. Is this the maximum the British government can do? Is this all these children is not enough? How many more children do we need to say? I think the number of children killed so far is 3,850 children. These ones are the ones in the hospitals. Under the bombed and demolished houses, there are hundreds and thousands of people who are not recognized yet. We need to take action. We need to stop this war. This war is not Hamas-Israel war. This is a war on the Palestinian in Gaza. So the media is complicit with this occupation. The media is misleading the people in the UK. We need to take action. It's not acceptable to see this number of children. If we come tomorrow, we will find hundreds of more children died. And I don't know until when we will make action. Please, please, everyone, we need to take action. Everyone take action to protect our children. Thank you.